so the question of course that might come up is is this the only way that it can be done is there a different way in which i could go about controlling this entire hardware okay and one method that is slightly complicated but has like immense benefits if you sort of go through with it is the use of something called a sequencing rom okay and i'm going to basically work through this example once again right and say okay what does it mean to talk about a sequencing rom let's take exactly the same you know seven operations need to be performed right i am going to say that you know and we already uh, discussed that the op column m1 to m6 and uh, you know a4 a5 etc is redundant right it doesn't really give us any useful information now if i have this i am going to introduce a new encoding right and what i mean by encoding is just some way by which i can specify different values and the encoding that i'm going to use is to say that if my signal is an input i0 to i6 i will basically use something which has the msb you know a 4 bit value where the msb is equal to 0 and the next 3 bits indicate the number right so for 0 it will be 0 000 for i6 it will be 0 110 Right, because one one zero is six in binary. Right. So uh, similarly for the registers, right, R zero to R four, I will make the MSB equal to one, followed by zero zero zero. Right. So R four, for example, would be one one zero zero. Okay. Obviously, this is not the only encoding that's possible. Right. I could choose pretty much any unique mapping from a number. to uh, input or a register and say that this is the mapping that i have right this is the reason why i separated out inputs and registers in this way is partly for convenience right i mean it becomes easy to just look at the msb and say whether it's an input or a register obviously this is not compulsory or this was not essential to getting the entire thing working the interesting thing of course is now now that i have this encoding right let's look at what would be done in time step 0 right i can basically look at that what needs to be done is i need to feed i0 and i1 to the multiplier and route the output to r0 and i need to feed i1 and i3 to the adder and route the output to r4 okay so effectively i am i can create a binary string like this right 0000 0001 etc right so 12 bits for the multiplier 12 bits for the adder which basically tell me exactly where it each of those hardware units is getting its input from and where it is sending its output i need to add two more bits right i'll just add two bits at the end and say that those two are used for indicating what kind of operation is actually being performed on the adder right the multiplier is easy it always does multiplication but the adder unit could be doing either add subtract or compare right and for that what i'll do is i'll add another two bits and say that if it's an addition operation i'll use 0 0 if it's subtraction i'll use 0 1 if it's comparison i'll do 1 0 i mean comparison is probably the same as addition it's just you know uh, it might raise a flag or something of that sort right but i'm not even thinking about that i'm just saying okay i'll treat comparison as a separate operation and say that you know i'll use 1 0 in order to indicate comparison now the interesting thing is you can basically think of this entire 26 bit value as a type of instruction to the hardware okay so i just need to take a series of such 26 bit values store them somewhere and read them out at appropriate points in time and feed them to my control logic right or rather they constitute my control logic directly right each one of these is directly telling me what values need to be fed in through which multiplexer okay how do i make use of this i would basically say that you know the uh time step 0 would correspond to this long you know 26 bit value uh, at the top which corresponds to the add operation as well as the m1 uh, computation similarly at time step 1 i would have you know uh, i2 so that's 0010 then i3 is 0011 etc okay and at the end i have 10 which basically indicates that the a5 operation is a comparison operation move further down at time step 2 i have m3 
which basically takes R0 and R1 as inputs and produces R0 as the output. Okay. Now I am faced with a slightly uh, you know, non-trivial situation, right? I mean, it looks easy. Uh, it's easy for us to just put a dash over there and say, don't do anything. But I need to make sure that the hardware actually doesn't try to do anything, right? If I put in, for example, 0, 0, 0, 0, all zeros over there, Unfortunately, what the adder will try to do is it will take, try to take I0, add it to I0 and put the output also in I0, right? Which is, I mean, maybe it's harmless because after all putting the output to I0 is not really possible, right? At best, it would be an invalid instruction or something like that. But may, it might be simpler if I just sort of explicitly say, I will introduce something as a no op, right? And in this case, once again, it's a convention that I'm following. I'll just say, okay, you know, put all ones over there. It corresponds to an invalid condition, which I will treat as a no op. Okay. Because there is no R7, there is no register 7. And similarly, among the operations, there is no nothing corresponding to a 1 1. Okay. So this sequence of bits basically corresponds to a no op. So in this way, I can basically proceed and fill up the rest of the operations. You go through this and you know the sequencing ROM, ROM basically continues to have all of these values, right? So at the end, basically it has seven binary numbers. Each one is 26 bits, right? And what I need to do is to somehow store all of these values somewhere and make sure that they come out at the appropriate point in time, okay? And how do I make this come out? The simplest way that I can make this data come out is to say that, you know, I will store it into some kind of a memory. I, that's why I've called it a ROM, a read-only memory, right? And I'll make sure that I give the addresses 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, okay? And by doing so, I can make sure that whenever the address is equal to 0, the operations that get done correspond to M1 and A4. Whenever the address is equal to 1, they correspond to M2 and A5 and so on. Okay. Now, of course, the question that then comes up is, don't I need to loop back to the beginning? Right. So I need to, at the end of these seven uh, time steps, I need to do that check, the comparison check, right, corresponding to A5 and say, okay, what do I do next? Okay. Should I now go back to the beginning or should I just proceed further down from here? Right. So clearly, the sequencing ROM that I have described so far is good in the sense that, you know, it makes my, how I describe my uh, control very straightforward, right? But has this thing that I have not completely specified yet how to do this looping back to the beginning, okay? And by the way, one more term that is usually used for something like this is something called microprogramming. So this is related to the concept of microprogram, which is also used in a different context inside actual CPUs in order to say that, you know, I mean, I can take an instruction and break it up into something called micro instructions, which in turn will, you know, do multiple steps of this sort. 